it's Robin from SeniorSafetyAdvice.com and I'm here to talk to you today about using a cane. Not everybody wants to do that. Um, you may or may not know that I'm a dental hygienist and I had a patient yesterday who when I called him back, an elderly gentleman, when I called him back to clean his teeth, he got up, it was a struggle, I had to help him off the couch in the first place in our reception area and then as he walked back he not only held on to my shoulder with one hand, he held on to the wall with the other hand. And we kind of walked down the, the wall like <laughs> this. That is not right. He should be using a cane or better yet, a walker. But he and I had a discussion about it. He didn't want to use it because it made him look like he was old. Okay, you're going to look really old if you fall and you break a hip. So get over that and use a cane or a walker to help you be safer. So what are some of the reasons that you might need a cane? Like this gentleman, he was too weak. He really needed to have a cane in order to support himself. Um, maybe neurological problems, something like Parkinson's disease, um, multiple sclerosis, those kinds of things. Sometimes it's just because you're recovering from surgery and it's going to be a temporary thing, but you still need to use the cane in order to be as safe as possible. So aside from those reasons for needing a cane, you also are going to want one if you're having trouble going up and down the stairs or if you find that you're supporting yourself by holding on to furniture or using the wall or whatever in order to get around. You're also going to need to use a cane if you have trouble walking over uneven ground safely, if you, you know, you're wobbly and unsteady on that reading my notes, um, or also if you don't do some activities for fear that you're going to fall. And lastly, if walking causes you to be very tired after you walk or you find that you have joint pain after you walk, then you're going to also want to make sure that you use a cane to help yourself. In fact, statistics have shown, studies have shown, that when you use a cane, the leg opposite the hand holding the cane has the pressure reduced by 25 percent. So you can see where it would help you if you're tired or your muscles are weak. So for example, I have this cane and I am using this left or right leg. It's wrapped in the bandage just to illustrate that this is the leg that is the bad leg. So in my case, I'm going to use the cane. I'm going to hold it in the hand of the good leg because I want that support on that side. So, and I'm going to keep the weight off of the bad leg. So I'm going to show you real quick how to walk with the cane. This happens to be a standard cane with a quad tip on it. Um, you can also get a quad cane which has a wider four-legged tip. So when you're walking with a any type of a cane, but a, particularly a quad tip, you want to be sure that all four of the tips hit the floor. You don't want to just be trying to balance on one tip. So in order to walk with a cane, this is my injured leg or my weaker leg. You're going to hold the cane in the hand opposite that weaker or injured leg. And you're going to move it just a little bit at a time. You're going to move the cane and the injured foot or leg just about the space of one footstep. And then you're going to bring the stronger leg forward so all three are together. Same thing, extending it again and then meeting. Extending the cane and the weaker leg at the same time and then coming up with the stronger leg. Okay, so now that we've tackled how you walk, the big thing is, is how do you go up the stairs? That can be a little bit trickier, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. Thing you want to do is have a firm grip on the handrail so that you've got support on both sides with the side with the cane and the side with the hand. And then you're going to stand at the base of the stairs. You're going to move your strongest leg. So you're shifting your weight to the weak leg and the cane. You're going to move with your strongest leg first to the top first step. And then you're going to move the cane and the weaker leg together to get up to the steps. So all three things, the cane and both legs, both feet are on the steps. Then you've moved your hand up on the railing 
and you're going to repeat the process. So again, strongest leg goes first and you're standing on the weaker leg and using the cane for support. And then you're going to step up on the stronger leg, bringing the weak leg and the cane up at the same time so you're on the same step. Again, all, everything's on the same step. <laughs> and you're going to repeat this process till you get to the top of the stairs. So now I'm going to show you how to go down the stairs with a cane. And there's an easy way to remember which leg goes first. It's up with the good, like you're going up to heaven, up with the good, and down with the bad, like you're going to a place that we don't want to talk about. So, so in this case, my injured or weaker leg is still the right leg. I'm going to actually switch that now. I'm going to put the cane in the hand on the weaker side and I'm going to hold the railing with the stronger side and then when you get close to the ste steps what you're going to do is you're going to go down with the bad so that means the weaker leg goes first so the cane and the weaker leg are going to move together and you're standing on that stronger leg then once they're together on the steps you're going to transfer your weight to the cane and your weaker leg and then come down with the strong leg. And then you're going to repeat that process. So again, you're moving your hand down the banister. You're going down with the bad. So the cane and the injured leg. And then you're bringing the stronger leg down to meet it. And you want to go step by step until you get to the bottom. Just like this. Okay. So you've made it down to the bottom of the stairs. One thing I wanted to mention to you, my former mother-in-law had a lot of trouble picking her feet up, her legs up, high enough to walk upstairs. And so that meant that she missed a lot of family functions because she couldn't get into somebody's house if she had to walk up two or three steps in order to get into the house. A normal riser is about seven inches tall. There is a thing called an easy stair step cane, and I'm going to go ahead and put the link in the comments below. But the stair step cane is a platform that has a cane built into it, and it cuts the, the riser distance or height about in half. So it's about three and a half inches tall, and it's wide enough you can put your foot on it. So what you can do with this is you, instead of having to step up a seven inch riser, you're stepping up a three and a half inch riser then on, or cane <laughs> onto the platform, then you're going onto the riser, then you're moving that platform cane up and stepping up three and a half inches again and repeating it. It makes it a little bit easier if you can't pick your feet up. All right. That's the end of my cane demonstration. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments, good, bad, and different, put them down in the comment section below. Let us know how you have done with using a cane. Do you have any experience with the stair step um, riser cane that I was talking about? Let everybody know what you think about it. The other thing is, is we would love it if you would get, subscribe to our channel. So there's a subscribe button down in the corner and then also hit the notification bell when you subscribe so that you'll be um, told as soon as we have a video that comes out. There is a video that we release every Friday. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover in any future videos, let us also know by the comments below. Thanks for watching SeniorSafetyAdvice.com. We'll see you in the next video.